Ladies and gentlemen, this is the court of public opinion, and I am still Francis Derito Karuru. Now, in the coming series of these videos, we'll be dealing with one of the arms of government, the judiciary. So far, we have, I have been dealing with the executive arm of government. That is the Kenya Police Service and the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. These of two offices of the executive they have shown inertia and in excitement to public service and justice. And these two offices, the Kenya Police Service and the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, have failed in their primary calling to serve, they have failed in their link in the justice chain. And like they say, a chain is as strong as the weakest link. And in the justice chain, we have found that the Kenya Police Service and the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. They have failed. They cannot justify the taxpayers' money that they consume. These two offices, to the extent of this case, they have been good for the people who serve there to earn a living, feed their children, and generally look good driving around, having power, but otherwise the money they, they earn cannot be offered in the circumstances actually. It's not clean because that money is really money that has been picked out of our pockets. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, in these coming videos, we'll have a sneak view of the judiciary. And I want you to judge the judiciary with me and find if the judiciary is any better than the executive. It is not possible for an office that exists in a given ecosystem to be cleaner than the other offices in that ecosystem. The ecosystem I have in mind here is the justice industry, to call it so, or the justice machine, to call it so. The police, the ODPP, and the judiciary, they are in the same pool. They're in the same pool. And is it possible for the police to be rotten, the ODPP to be lethargic, and the judiciary has angels and vest of virgins? I don't think it is possible. So the question I'm asking of the judiciary vis-a-vis uh, um, -vis the executive, it is similar to a question I asked in one of those publications. Is it possible to have um, the headquarters of the Ministry of Education rotten, that is Jogo House, B? The Teacher Service Commission rotten, and the Kenya National Examinations Council staffed with 
angels and invest of virgins. Nobody got that question until the truth dawned on us that the Kenya National Examinations Council, being in the same ecosystem with Jogo House and the Teacher Service Commission, there is no way <laughs> it can be clean. It's not possible. It can't work. This is about the judiciary. So far, in the court of public opinion, I have written to the chief magistrate, Nyeri Law Courts. The chief magistrate at the time I am writing is the Honorable Will Brother Juma. The Honorable Will Brother Juma. I have written to her. I have gone to her office and seen her two times. My letter to the Honorable Rubroda Juma is dated the 20th of August 2013. 20th of August 2013. I have waited through the balance of August, through September, through October, through November, almost through the whole of December, and the Honorable, we still have to go call these people Honorable, and the Honorable Chief Magistrate, Will Brother Juma, has not replied to my letter. First, that is against the constitution because I have a right to be informed as to why I cannot get the right to justice. I have communicated with a public office and the public office has not replied to my letter. To date, the Honorable Will Brother Juma has never replied to my letter. But of course, she's a magistrate, in the judiciary, an Egyptian god. She doesn't have to reply to anything. Because what will you me and you do to, to her? She's protected, apparently. She has power. So you can't do anything about it. Citizens, in my video, Beautiful law gain sales. I discuss section 89, subsection 1, 2, 3, and their place in the institution of proceedings. The Honorable Chief Magistrate to Brother Juma has received my report as per section 89 of the Proc Criminal Procedure Code. The Honorable Will Brother Juma has received my report on the suspect criminal incident. And so far, she has not shown signs that anything is going to come out of so, a citizen in his own country has nowhere to turn to but to the same institution. So, one day in late December 2013, most of the court was, most of the judiciary, I think, was on Christmas leave. I turn up in court. In the courts. I turn up in the courts and I talk to, I, I find somebody at the reception and I explain myself and they refer me to a certain lady who was, I think, in the registry of the High Court, the criminal bit of the High Court. And I need to commend that lady because she received me well, I told that lady 
what I had in mind, how much frustration I had experienced before the Kenya Police Service and the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, Nyeri Bureau. And she told me the court is a court of law and it is public. I want to repeat that. She told me that the Nyeri law courts were a court of law, were courts of law, and they were public. I knew that much, that all our courts are courts of law. They are not regal courts. They are legal courts. Courts of law. Regal courts are, say, like Buckingham Palace, that you can go there and drink highballs with the Queen and high society and so on and blood each other and bleed each other and certainly you feel like you own the world so our courts are courts of law and they are public courts now that reminds me of a certain justice who was shocked when i told her that her court was a court, a public court of law. I'll be coming to that in uh, the Kinyajui series of videos. The, the judge actually asked me to repeat <laughs> what I said. <laughs> and I told her that to the best of my understanding, her court was a court, a public court of law. Is then that that judge has a problem, serious problem, with the public bit of the court and the low bit of the court. She so would rather operate from the chambers. That's what. But that is for another, for the Kenyaji series of videos. Now, so I went ahead and. I filed the subject of this series of videos. That is the High Court Miscellaneous Application Number 57 of 2013 at Nyeri. So, citizens, I filed the High Court Miscellaneous, I filed the High Court Miscellaneous Application Number 57 of 2013 on the 31st of December 2013. And the case was scheduled and listed to be heard before uh, the Honorable Justice Wakiaga. Now, on the appointed date, Justice Wakiaga ruled and ordered that I serve the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. I did serve the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions and on the next appointed date, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions was represented. Briefly, the, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, Nyeri Bureau, was headed by one Kaigai. Kaigai apparently is quite an experienced administrator 
and therefore must be a well-trained lawyer. Um, Kaiga himself never turned up in court, but he did set his officers. Among the officers who are going to defend this application are one John Jue. Jue is really the lead defender of this business because he's justice worker and I must commend him here. In his own words, he agreed that this was the first time to the best of his knowledge. And he asked Jue the same question. This was the first time to the best of his knowledge that that procedure had been used. And he's actually suggesting to Jue, please don't have, don't puff. The applicant has the fidelity to the law. And Justice Wakaga himself, in his own words, in court, indicated that he had summoned Jue to his chambers. And there is something they had agreed that the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions was supposed to have done and had not yet done. And the only thing that they could have agreed was that the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions institutes proceedings against the suspect. What else could they have agreed in relationship to the case? It was the only thing that he could have advised them to do. But for reasons which they are the only ones who can tell the public, they chose no. So here we are. Justice Wakela has indicated that he has found the fide my fidelity to section 89 to be perfect. In his own words, the High Court miscellaneous application number 57 of 2013 at Nyeri, Francis Derito Karoro as the applicant versus the Chief Magistrate of Nyeri Law Court was listed on its maiden date for the 20th of January, 2014. Remember, this application was at a certificate of urgency and the registry listed it very early. 20th of January, 2014, it's quite a lame court date. And this was before the Honorable Justice James Wakela and the court clerk is Wajohi. And the Honorable Justice James Wakela certified the matter as urgent. Tick for Justice Wakela. And he ordered that the same to be served upon the Director of Public Prosecutions. And the case was listed then for the 18th of February 2014. That is approximately in a month's time. And that is commendable tick for Justice Wakela. Now, on the 18th of February 2014, we are still before the Honorable. Justice James Wakela and the court clerk is still Wajoi. Yours truly is representing himself. Mr. Cheboy is listed for the state. The state. The state are the people who run the nation of Kenya. Now, Mr. Cheboy, for the Director of Public Prosecutions, is 
acquitted in the proceedings as telling the court, we do not have the application. We, <laughs> we do not have the application. And you are truly the applicant, the one and the only one. Francis Dirito Karuru tells the court, Your Honor, I served the office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. And I spoke to Mr. Kaigai on the same date that I served them. I have a stamped copy. And I showed the judge my set of documents endorsed by the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. I have never understood why lawyers can stand up in court and look the judge in the eye and tell him, I have not been served because I have seen this happening in court that the uh, lawyer tells the judge that they have not been served. And you are forced to stand up, approach the bench and show the judge the stamp and the endorsement and the date on the document. I think it is immoral. And a lawyer who can stand up in court and cheat the judge, cheat the public, mislead the public that they have not been served, those cannot be called defenders of the public, cannot be called officers of the court. It is shameful. You may be a lawyer, my audience, but please, it's not a good habit to lie. No, it's not. Then if you are not a Christian or a religious person, please don't lie. But carry on simple things like this. Good. Uh, so, <laughs> Mr. Cheboy says that he was not aware of <laughs> what was coming. He was not aware of what was coming. This the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. Why do you want to waste this public court's time with such genuine uh, dramas? They are cheap. They are cheap. And there should be penalties for this. The court should get the habit of punishing lawyers who turn up in court and they are being paid and they waste the court's time with cheap dramas. Um, thank God for Justice James Wakela. He ruled that the application be fixed for hearing on the 5th of March, 2014. 5th of March, 2014. This judge is no joke doesn't waste time and he enjoys his job like I do enjoy my job and my life. Life is good. So um, on the 5th of March, the Honorable Justice Wakela uh, was not in and we were all referred to um, the deputy registrar of the court to pick new dates. And this is a trick. This, are, this is the year 2014. And the judge has not turned up. And all cases, all cases referred to this judge are taken before the deputy registrar to pick new dates. This is something that I could have recommended to the Mobasa Law Court. When, for whatever reason, a judge is absent, 
the files must be referred to the deputy registrar to pick new dates. You know why? Because if that does not happen, then you will leave the applicant, the appellant, to have to serve the respondents with a notice to come pick a court, a date in court, which is expensive. It's expensive, particularly if some of the parties are from outside town. So, Mombasa <laughs> Law low court. I'm not ashamed to tell you that you could have copied this faster. Litigants have turned up in court and the judge is not present. The deputy registrar must give new dates because everybody is there and they are not aware that the judge is absent. I'll be coming back to the Mobasa Law Courts. They have an appointment with me. <clears throat> now, miscellaneous application number 57 of 2013 turned up before the Honorable Justice Wakiaga next on the 23rd of June, 2014. The court clerk this time is one doom. Mr. Jue has made an entrance. Mr. Jue of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions makes his first appearance in this application. And this day, we are prosecuting this application. I found that court uh, rank parties before them. I have found that courts do not exactly treat parties as equal before the law. So I am the applicant and Mr. Uh, sorry, I am the applicant, but Justice Wakiaga actually gives the initiative to Mr. Jue. So it's actually Mr. Jue who starts to defend before I the applicant, I have highlighted to the public court, what are the issues? He did not. He was not there with an application. That would be understandable. But because perhaps he's a lawyer, or perhaps he represents the state, or perhaps the appellant is a child of a lesser god, perhaps. But before the law we are supposed to be equal. None of us bears a halo, like a saint. No. And I am a member of the public turning up in court at my own cost. I'm not being paid to turn up in court. I am paying to turn up in court. For that reason, I, it's me who is hurting. It's me who deserves to be given the first opportunity to tell the court, the public court, where I am hurting. So for that, I am afraid Justice Wakiaga uh, made a mistake. Yeah. So here you have Mr. Jew of the Office of the Public Prosecution. And he tells the court, the applicant has stated that the chief magistrate signs the complaint. The magistrate refused to sign his complaint. And consequently, by refusing to sign, she made a ruling which should have been appealed against. What do you put that? 
Mr. Jue tells the court that the magistrate, by refusing to sign the complaint, made a ruling which I should have appealed against. Now, Mr. Jue <clears throat> seems to be a student of sophistry. Sophistry is a, a philosophy, you could call it so, in which one class of society knows so much compared to the other classes of society such that they can form, they can pass ignorance as the truth, they can cheat, they can lie, but because they are accepted to be learned and they assume everybody else is stupid, then they have control. Now, it is this same date that Mr. Jue told the Honorable Justice James Wakela that the applicant had written to the Judicial Service Desk on the same matter. And the applicant, you are truly, said yes, he had written as a matter of right and he would be filing the correspondence between him and the judicial service desk. And the applicant went further and told the court that the judicial service desk had commended him for his accurate understanding of the institution of proceedings against suspects. That brought back the matter to section 89 of the Criminal Procedure Code, which the applicant read in court. Mr. Jewel proceeds in his sophistry and he decides to call the court's attention to subsection 5 of section 89 of the Criminal Procedure Code. And the record of the proceedings captures Mr. Jue telling the court, subsection 5 therefore states that there must be an order. There were no grounds placed before the magistrate. The Office of the Public Prosecution cannot record proceedings before the investigation is done. That is, I'm quoting the proceedings by the Honorable Justice Wakiaga's hands. Uh, so, now, Mr. Jewel, Mr. Jewel, in response, calls the court's attention to subsection 4 of section 89 of the Criminal Procedure Code. And he further calls the court's attention to subsection 5 of section 89 of the Criminal Procedure Code. Court. <laughs> Mr. Jue is recorded in the proceedings as saying there was nothing placed before Mrs. Juma for her to sign a complaint. Mr. Jue is captured in the record of the proceedings as saying section 89 is that evidence had been collected and placed before the deputy public prosecutor for him to make a decision. He says, there was nothing placed before Mrs. Juma 
for her to sign a complaint. Your message you were is saying that <laughs> I should have tabled evidence before the Honorable Brother Juma for her to make a decision. That is nonsense. It's not a requirement. It's not a requirement. Mrs. The Honorable Brother Juma actually is very well guided by the law on how she could have dismissed this complaint in law, but she did not. She did not. And I want to give the Honorable uh, Will Brother Juma some benefit of doubt. She could have, the law is there. She could have dismissed it in law to leave me to appeal, but she didn't. She left my complaint in limbo. And I have reason to believe the reason the honorable, the brother Juma, did not sign this complaint is because the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution under uh, Kairai had indicated that the honors was on them and they had the ball. Kairai is no longer the bureau chief in Nyeri. But I want to challenge you. Mr. Kaigai, you failed. Now, I responded to Mr. Jewish diversion. Now, <laughs> Citizens, um, I had to hold Mr. Jewish's hands, unfortunately, as far as Section 89 is concerned. And I informed the court that under Section 89 of the Criminal Procedure Code, subsection 1, nothing is expected of magistrate. And I want to read it. And it says, section 89, complete and charge, subsection 1 says, proceedings may be instituted either by making of a complaint or by the bringing before a magistrate of a person who has been arrested without warrant. Nothing is expected of the magistrate in subsection one. Let's go to subsection two. At the subsection two of section eighty-nine of the criminal of the criminal procedure code, it says a person who believes from a reasonable and probable cause that an offence has been committed by another person may make a may make a complaint thereof to a magistrate having jurisdiction. Nothing is expected of a magistrate in subsection 2. Nothing. The onus, the responsibility is on the complainant to make the complaint. Under subsection 3, it says a complaint may be made orally or in writing, but if made orally, shall be reduced to writing by the magistrate, and in either case, shall be signed by the complainant and the magistrate. So, this application made under section 
89, subsection 1, 2, and 3. It does not require the magistrate to consider <laughs> evidence. No, and I'm not supposed to take evidence. What is required of the magistrate is to take a pen if I choose to make my complaint orally, take a pen and faithfully record my complaint. And she signs and I sign. Or if I have made my complaint in writing, then it is up to the magistrate to sign the complaint and I sign the complaint. Now, it is only in subsection 4 where the magistrate now is free to consider this complaint and to make a decision. Subsection 1, subsection 2, subsection 3 does not require the magistrate to make a decision. No. The law is clear. She is not supposed to make a decision there. Without going through subsection 3, she cannot go to subsection 4. So she must first of all sign my complaint. Only then can she launch subsection 4. Subsection 4 says the magistrate upon receiving a complaint or where an accused person has been arrested without a warrant is brought before him shall, subject to the provisions of subsection 5, draw up or cause to be drawn up and shall sign a formal charge. Oh. We shall sign a formal charge containing a statement of the offence with which the accused is charged, unless the charge is signed and presented by a police officer. I want to read that again. This is section 89, subsection 4. It says, the magistrate, upon receiving a complaint, or where an accused person has been arrested without a warrant is brought before him, shall, subject to the provision of subsection 5, draw up or cause to be drawn up, and shall sign a formal charge containing a statement of the offence with which the accused is charged, unless the charge is signed and presented by a police officer. So here we are. I've written my complaint. It is there before the Honorable Brother Juma. And the application is strictly under section 89, 1, 2, 3. Like that. The complaint is there. It's up to her now to cause. It's up to her to draw up or cause to be drawn up a formal charge containing a statement of the offense for which the accused is charged. Now, <clears throat> Later, I'll be addressing myself to the person who succeeded the Honorable with Brother Juma. That person puts not one foot, but both feet in his mouth. As he <laughs> tells me what a magistrate can do and what a magistrate cannot do. I don't know where this person went. Land. The law is here, treated, and 
the government of the Republic of Kenya and the religious institutions. They have invested so much in literacy. <laughs> Even if you, you did not go to college to learn law, <laughs> the law is written. It's there. You can read it. Now, you uh, mentioned subsection 5 <laughs> of section 89 of the Criminal Procedure Code. Why don't we read that one also? Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, subsection 5 of section 89 of the Criminal Procedure Code says, where the magistrate is of the opinion that a complaint or formal charge made or presented under this section does not disclose an offence, the magistrate shall make an order refusing to admit the complaint or formal charge and shall record his reasons for the order. Justice will have been done if the magistrate is of the opinion, for whatever reason, if she is of the opinion or he is of the opinion that if she is of the opinion that a complaint or formal charge made or presented under this section does not disclose an offence. Actually, it's subjective. If the magistrate is of the opinion that a complaint or formal charge made or presented under this section does not disclose an offence, then she's free to make an order refusing to admit the complaint or formal charge and shall record the reason for the order. Now, there is no such order. There is no such order because I don't have it. If there was such an order, Jue and the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions would have tabled it in court, in which case that is the point at which I would have made an appeal in the High Court. But so far, the Honorable Brother Juma has managed to leave a complainant in limbo. The only alternative was to turn to the High Court. The High Court, by powers granted by the Constitution, has oversight over lower courts. And there I am before the Honorable Justice James Wakiaga. I've made an application for the High Court to compel the Chief Magistrate Will Blooder Juma to sign my complaint. Of course, having signed, to proceed as in subsection 4. And if she so wishes, and if she, she so wishes, to proceed as subsection 5. The Honorable Brother Juma has abdicated her duty and responsibility to the public to the extent of this case. Now, <clears throat> um, citizens, um, once again, I would like to commend the Honorable Justice James Wakia for the way he conducted this application, the way he managed 
the way he presided over the court. I commend him. Um, I felt like a citizen turning up in a public court. However, the proceedings fail to register something that Mr. Jue raised in court. And <laughs> Mr. Jue uh, chose to turn to Section 88 of the Criminal Procedure Code. Mr. Jue did try to use Section 88 of the Criminal Procedure Code to defend this application. Now, this Section 88 <laughs> has been misunderstood by some heavy duty persons. As a matter of fact, even the Honorable Justice James Wakela, he uses Section 88 not to dismiss the case, but maybe to prop up his indecision. But Jue did try to use it. The record of the proceedings, they do capture the applicant, you are through, saying that my understanding is that Section 881, while the charge has been admitted, Mr. Jue of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions uh, did try to mislead the court, but really it is not the court he was misleading. He was hoping that uh, by reading, by applying Section 88 of the Criminal Procedure Code, this applicant, who is not a lawyer, he'll be out of his waters and floundering and in a state of panic. So he decided to make an attempt at applying Section 88. Now, Section 88 of the Criminal Procedure Code says, it's titled, the title is Permission to Conduct Prosecution. Section 88 of the Criminal Procedure Code. It's titled, Permission to Conduct Prosecution. Subsection 1 says, a magistrate trying a case may permit the prosecution to be conducted by any person, but no person other than a public prosecutor or other officer generally or specially authorized by the director of public prosecutions in this behalf shall be entitled to do so without permission. Why don't I repeat that? Because that is the part that Jewe used. And it's a part that has been addressed by some heavy duty persons and they missed something. Let's do it. Section 88, subsection 1. A magistrate trying a case may permit the prosecution to be conducted by any person. I don't know what has to go beyond that point. A magistrate trying a case. The catch word here is trying a case. Now, trying the case means that the institution of proceedings has passed. Trying, and that is what I told the Honorable Justice Wakel, that we could not apply Section 88 before applying Section 89. Citizens, 
if you have a leader of anything who cannot imagine now that should not be a leader because a leader is a person who takes the public, the people he leads, where the public has never been, where the leader himself has never been. So that calls for imagination. If you are a leader and you don't have imagination, then you are not a leader. Don't use that. You're not a leader. A leader should be a person able to take people where the people have never been and where the leader himself or herself has never been. That's where imagination comes in, in leadership. So if you can't, you have, you are disabled in the department of imagination, you have no business leading anything. Not a court, not the judiciary, not the nation. No. Don't waste public time. You don't have imagination. Now, on section 88, I suggest to the uh, Chief Justice, please post this in the courts that you cannot roll out section 88 before rolling out section 89. A lot of people take the numeric order because 88 comes before 89. So we must do 88 first before we go to 89. No, it's not like that. Section 8, eight subsection 1 talks of a magistrate trying. Now, trying means that a case has been instituted already. The parties are in court already, trying. The parties are in court. There is the complainant and the suspect, they're in court already. That's what it means. There is no other understanding of the word trying here. And let me see that when Jewel tried to use this section, I think for the next few minutes, you could only see feathers in court because I made it very clear. I made it very clear that section 88 is about trying the case. Now, citizens, the word prosecution is very broad. Prosecution is very broad. But the word trying is very specific and narrow. Now, this law Cap 75, as of the year 2013, was written by people who are really educated. Yeah, being educated is not about having a piece of parchment paper for which maybe 80% of it you copied or somebody did the coursework for you. So, you are graduated and gone there in robes and motorboards and scrolls and things. No, we know what's going on. But Kenya has a good heritage of education. Kenya has a good heritage of education. The people who wrote this law, it's very hard to gather such people today. And I'm only surprised that so far we have not ducked up. We have not ducked up this law. Now, section 88 talks about the trying part of prosecution. The trying part of the prosecution. All the role of parties is in court. The case has been instituted. The case has been instituted. I'll be coming back to the, this later as I address myself to justice or terror's judgment. So, 
as per the date the honorable and brother juma received my complaint a case is instituted against the suspects i repeat that as per the date the honorable brother juma received my complaint as per the law a case is instituted against the suspects i would like somebody to challenge me on that in legal dom somebody in legal dom would challenge me on that so a case is instituted what is remaining is to follow the criminal procedure code in the manner of subsection 5 and subsection 4 of the criminal procedure code justice wakera missed that point and failed to record it that the reality is that by the time of this application a case was instituted let us address ourselves now to justice or careless judgment.